What is going on everybody? This is Tatro and today I want to show you how I created this beat with my Launchpad Pro in Ableton Live. Now if you haven't seen the full beat, make sure you go watch it somewhere up here or on my Instagram. Open that in a new tab, come back and watch this tutorial. I used some samples from a producer called RG Beats who hit me up on Instagram and was like, hey, would you want to check out this sample pack and make a track? I checked it out and it was actually a really cool collection of vocal samples. Let's get into the tutorial. So when I was first creating this beat, I was using the push, which pretty much lives on my desk. That made it really easy to go through some of the samples and transpose using the knobs. And that's a lot easier than just working on screen. But when it came time to perform, I chose the Launchpad Pro because I wanted something more compact than the push, but I also needed access to more pads than any of my other controllers have. And I created this track using a pack from a producer called RG Beats. Uh, this is called his Vox Sound Pack. Uh, he reached out on Instagram and wanted to send me this pack to make a beat with. And it's this collection of some really awesome vocal samples. I'll let you hear some of them. And if you've noticed a pattern with my beats lately, I'm really loving starting with a vocal sample, whether I'm chopping it up and making it into a MIDI instrument or just using it in a drum rack like I am here. So going through all these samples, I found a couple that I liked, uh, two that were in E flat minor, so that kind of dictated the key of the piece. So I used one sample and chopped it, and you can see it's pretty tight chop right there. Just the beginning of that sample, and the one right next to it is from the same one, but it's a little further down along in the sample. Notice on both of these, I have the fade in turned up and the fade out, that makes it so it doesn't have that awkward little click at the beginning or at the end. And you can easily blend between the two. And then the other one was from a different sample where the singing is a little bit in a higher register. So different parts of the sample. Since these are tight little snippets of a sample and they have those in and out points, I like to put some reverb and some delay on them. So for instance, here's this sample just dry. Since I am taking a smaller chunk that doesn't last very long, I like to add the reverb and the delay to give it some sustain so that it doesn't just sound like it's abruptly cutting off. Also, all these vocal samples are in the same choke group, which means they stop each other when you play a new one. If this wasn't the case, they would just blend right over each other and it would sound like a whole mess. You can access that right in here in the chains. So if I go ahead and turn this I.O. on, I can look at the choke groups. And I have them each set to channel 16, the same channel, which means they will stop each other. Let me just turn that to none and you can see what it sounds like. it starts to be a bit of a mess. So since I had the basis of my track with these vocal samples, I decided to go ahead and add a bass line. Now just like we were talking about with choke groups, each one of these four bass samples are assigned to the same choke group as well. You definitely don't want bass notes gliding over each other. That will sound really messy. But the way, when I'm looking for something, I'm looking for a certain sound and it's sample based like this. I really just go into Ableton Live, click on samples and type in what I'm looking for. So I was looking for a bass sample. And then, you know, I can go through this whole collection here. Some things are obviously not what I want. Like I wasn't looking for an acoustic bass, I was looking for a cool driven bass sample. So I stumbled across these alpha samples and you know I figured they were a good starting point and I found the one that was closest to the key that I'm in so I went ahead and I found the E1 
Now that's a good starting point. I realize now I could have used E0 because I ended up transposing them down an octave anyway. But I used E1, as you can see right here. But it definitely doesn't sound the same. So let me bring you through the effects chain in my process so you can actually see how I got to that final sound. Here's the original sample. Now I want to bring that down an octave, but this is also playing in E while my piece is in E flat. So I needed to not only bring it down an octave, which is 12 semitones, I need to bring it down 13. Already from the transposition we have a dark sound, but I wanted to make it a little bit dirtier, so I added some erosion. Now I kind of took out a lot of that high end anyway with this EQ because I wanted it dark sounding, but I think some of the erosion texture still comes through. Then I went ahead and added the uh, pedal effect with the bass guitar front of stage preset, tweaked a little bit. Added a little reverb just to add some air, and then some crack, which you can hear over the whole piece. It just adds this nice vinyl crackle to the whole thing. So then from here on out, I just have my drum samples, a really basic kick from the Boy Wonder kit. My snare is also from that kit. I've been using Splice a lot lately. And I've got these hi-hats, Using the arpeggiator effect, if you don't know what that is, you can check out my video tutorial on how to apply that. But it's a way to just make really easy hi-hat patterns. So I have three different ones. One is my steady eighth note pattern. The other is a 24th glitch. The other is a 16th note glitch. I've got this really slappy reverb on this clap. It's basically got the diffusion network pulled all the way down on the high end. Pre-delay is turned up a bit. It's got an 8.19 second decay time. Here's this clap without that reverb. So that reverb is adding a ton of the character there. Then I just have two other samples from the pack that I transposed up. I needed something on the higher end for samples and something short to play with. And then this up here is just kind of like an effect for a downbeat. And that's pretty much it there in the drum rack. This whole thing is laying on a bed of sound essentially that is made up of one of these vocal samples kind of turned into a drone. So you notice this actually says in, it's an A minor sample. I'll play you what it sounds like. So it's really, really stretched out. Its initial BPM is 128. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down here to 128. So you can hear what it initially sounds like. This segment BPM right here, this is a good way to time stretch really quick and easy, as long as your track is warped. Let's hear what it sounds like, no transposition. Really cool sample. But I needed something more of a drone, I wasn't really looking for the character of that. First thing I needed to do was transpose it. It's an A minor, I need to get to E flat minor, those are six semitones apart. Then I went ahead and just stretched the heck out of it so that it was pretty much eight bars long. But notice that sounds pretty mechanical, but when you drench it in reverb, this is kind of just like your basic stock reverb here with the dry wet turned all the way up, but the decay time turned up to 10 seconds. You get that lush sort of drone sound. The other thing happening on the track is this shaker sample. Plays every two bars. 
Now it is just a shaker by itself. But when you add in some delay, you get a little bit of a pattern. Now I'm using that when I play this track to keep time. Otherwise, I would have no way of keeping the tempo unless I had the metronome on, but nobody really wants to hear a metronome when you play live. All right, so what did you think of that track and what did you think of those vocal samples? I really love starting my tracks with vocal samples, so this pack was perfect for me. I linked it in the description down below so you can check it out. Huge shout out to RG Beats for sending me that pack. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in a comment down below. Also, go ahead and share it with somebody who might also find it helpful. And if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.